Give the question some thought before moving on, please. We are going to have to draw a couple of free body diagrams, one for the 3 kilogram object and another one for the 5 kilogram object. So let's take a look at those free body diagrams. And in fact, the free body diagrams for both objects are quite similar. In both cases, because each object is attached to the rope, there is a tension force applied to each object that points upward. So we have the tension force on the circular object and then the tension force on the squarish shaped object. They both also, of course, have a weight force which acts downward. That's the force of gravity pulling each one downward. So we have W1 for the circular object and W2 for the square shaped object. After drawing a free body diagram, the next step, of course, is to go on to Newton's second law. And let's first apply that law to the circular object. Now, of course, Newton's second law says that the sum of the forces acting on an object is equal to the product of the object's mass and its acceleration. We'll notice in both cases, in both free body diagrams, there are forces acting only in the vertical direction or the y direction. So we really need to focus our analysis on the y direction only. So what we'll do is add the two forces acting on the circular object. The upward force is the tension T. The downward force is W1, and because it's downward, we actually need to make sure we call it minus W1. And then the mass of the circular object was given to us as 3 kilograms multiplied by its acceleration, which we do not know yet. A similar analysis will apply to the square shaped object. We have the upward tension, the downward weight force, we have its mass which happens to be 5 kilograms, and then we have to notice something very important. Because the square shaped object is more massive than the circular object, it's going to pull the objects overall in a downward fashion. And what that means is that the square shaped object is going to be accelerating downward. And when an object accelerates downward, we have to make sure we assign a negative sign to the acceleration. So instead of just putting a Y here, as we did before, we're going to actually stick a negative sign in the front. The acceleration of the circular object was in fact positive because the circular object will be accelerated upward. We just have to make sure to include that negative sign for the downward accelerating square object. Next, we can substitute in expressions for W1 and W2. In both cases, those are equivalent to the mass of the object times the gravitational constant. We'll do a similar thing for the square object. Why don't we go ahead and fill in the masses and 9.8 for the gravitational constant. It's getting a little cluttered here, so what I'll do is I'll kind of take that equation and its counterpart and kind of separate them away from all the other work we've done so far. What we'll do next is multiply the 3 times 9.8 and the 5 times 9.8, and then we'll add each respective term over to the other side of the equation and solve for t. So now we have an equation solved for t and then another equation also solved for t. And because those tensions are the same, we can actually set the two equations equal to one another. So we're going to set the 3a plus 29.4 equal to the negative 5a plus 49. And that's going to allow us to solve for a. And we can come down over here and work on that. At this point, we can just do a little bit of algebra and calculate the value of a by adding the 5a over to the left side and subtracting 29.4 from both sides, etc. And in doing so, we calculate that a, or acceleration, is equal to 2.45 meters per second squared. So we've actually answered part b of the question. We can easily solve for what is being asked in part a, the tension, by plugging our acceleration either into the first equation here or into the second equation here. Either one will determine the same value for tension. So why don't we just go ahead and pick the first equation. So we've plugged the value of A in, and we can now easily solve for tension, which turns out to be roughly 36.8 newtons. For part C of the question, we are asked to calculate the distance that each object will move in one second. They kind of say the first second, but that's just one second. And it doesn't matter which object we pick, we can still calculate easily 
how far that object will move during the first second. So let's arbitrarily select the three kilogram mass, the one that's traveling upward. Now for that object, we know that its acceleration is positive 2.45. We know that the object is starting from rest because it's stated in the question, which means that the initial velocity of the object is zero. We know the time that the object is traveling is one second, as stated in the question, and we are asked to calculate the displacement of that object during that one second. So for this, we're gonna to have to refer back to earlier concepts before we talked about forces and look at those uh, equations of kinematics. Now here are the four main equations of kinematics. It would probably be a good idea to pause the video and try to figure out which equation we could use to calculate the displacement. Please notice that the equations here have delta x written in for the displacement, whereas in our question we're using delta y because our objects are moving vertically. So pause the video and see if you can pick the right equation. And hopefully after doing so, you would come up with this equation because we have the initial velocity, the time, and the acceleration. So let's go ahead and plug in the known values and solve for delta y. And after doing that, we will get the final answer.